Hey everyone, it's three questions with Brian Heisey. First of the year, Brian. Woo! Uh, actually, I was just telling Brian, I, I have been trying to do some crazy workouts. And so if I like look a little stiff on camera, it's because I, I literally can't move. But uh, yeah, Brian, it's been great to meet you and talk to you. I actually, um, Brian told me he's from uh, York, Pennsylvania. I've been there several times. And so can I, I have to give a little shout out to all the people in York, Pennsylvania. So I know it's an awesome, awesome area. So Brian's actually a middle school teacher and middle school can range from like all over the place. You, you, nine, you never know what you're going to walk into in the building. Exactly. So yeah. it's 70s. Uh, yeah, and not only, not only is Brian a teacher, he's like rapper. Oh, uh, you, yeah, you know, you got to keep everything hidden. You got to be on the down low, keep everything <laughs> yeah. in the back pocket. You well, know? They, they say DL where I'm yeah. from. Yeah, so. well, yes, DL. Right. Right. <laughs> I just lost so, some credit right there. I lost some credit. Uh, no, whatever, whatever. So, <laughs> uh, so, like, actually, yeah, Brian, um, I might. So, I'm going to ask you another podcast. I'm going to throw some, like, we're going to do some. Actually, you know, I this is a three questions podcast, but I'm going to ask you who's your, like, favorite rapper of all time? Oh, wow. So, I, I got to go with Eminem. I, I got to go with Eminem. Yeah. yeah. And um, I just, I, I'm just going to go with him. He, he has a rough, you know, rough background, but yeah. like he can really spit fire. You can spit fire. I don't know if you're on TikTok, but there is a guy who like does this Eminem impression. Have you ever I've seen, seen him? I've seen him. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I don't follow pretty, him, but I, I see him. Yes. It's pretty funny, like how he does it, like how he's just, you know, like in different situations, like a solicitor coming to his door and stuff like that. Just how <laughs> it is actually like his cadence is pretty yeah. uh, interesting. I, I'm from Canada, so. Yeah. I'm, I'm, a, I'm a drake guy right like yeah. I, I, yeah. I, drake, yeah. drake and i drake uh and uh i don't know if you this is like a there's a american um it's like a, there's a cult following of this tv show have you ever heard of degrassi do you know the show i've heard of it but i, I haven't checked it out yeah so degrassi is like forever like it's basically been since the 80s right so there's like yeah. So like it follows like these kids and then once they graduate, then it's like Degrassi, the next generation, Degrassi <laughs> this, Degrassi that, right? Yeah. And so I actually would watch Drake on like before he was Drake, he was Drake. on the show Degrassi. Oh. And then someone said, oh, like you should hear this rapper. His name's Drake. And I was like, oh, who is that? And then I, I'm like, is that the kid from Degrassi? And then it was just like kind of like, weird, right? And yeah, then yeah. I, but he would like rap in degrassi in, like oh my god this is wow. like well canadian rap wow is and it like you, hey yeah. hey hey well, <laughs> yeah exactly, <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> you say at the end of everything <laughs> way easier to rhyme that way too yeah yeah too right if you just end it with a right so yeah, yeah they, and so he actually then i went back and watched an episode of him rapping and i was like oh maybe i was like a little hard on him it was actually because he's like drake in Degrassi, like you can yeah. kind of you see it. So, anyways, we'll we'll, we'll get off the rap talk. Yeah, that's so okay. That's okay. Freestyle, okay. But, hey, Brian, um, I, I, you know, you, you do some really interesting stuff. We were talking about uh, the uh, kind of you know your your focus on customized learning. We'll get mm -hmm. to that more into yeah. their podcast. But in your own experience, like who, when you think of like teachers that you've you know worked with, you've met over the years, even ones that that taught you, who's a teacher that that inspired you and why? Well, that that's a super easy question. And like as an educator, I mean, I'm I'm thinking that we all have that special teacher in our lives. Like I go back to my 10th grade year and then I had this teacher uh, when I was a senior too in high school. His name was Chris Urich and he was my uh, biology teacher and I am a science teacher now. So basically he just was a really down to earth guy. He had great discipline, but at the same time he knew how to like just bring that fun to the classroom that you, you know, you, you kind of look for as a kid. Um, and you know, I actually use some of the things that he has done when I was in high school, um, in my room as well. I, I, one of the things that I always do every year, I mean, it's small and it's not really educational related, mm -hmm. but, um, you know, the day or two before Christmas break, I always sit my kids down and read how the Grinch stole Christmas with them and I have them act it out and they love it. Um, that's just something, you know, just one example of how he built, um, like a connected classroom with the kids. Um, that he had. And I really, I really like aim to do that, not only teach the content, but make sure that the relationships are there within the classroom because kids learn better. Right. If they, you know, trust and have a relationship with their teacher. Yeah. And so we're going to give a little shout out to Chris Urich if you're somewhere out there. Right. And so the, 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 you know, it, it's interesting because 
Um, I know you teach middle school and then as you go up, the content gets heavier, you know, there's more, you know, content to teach typically. Right. A lot of people will actually say like, Oh, like I can't do a, B and C because like we have so much content to get through. But the reality of it is, is that when you take time to build those relationships, you get through the content quicker. You do. Um, I mean, the trust is there. The kids know they are coming into a safe space. Um, and even, you know, the humor, if you, if you're a teacher that involves humor, I mean, you know, kids like it. I mean, they might look at you like you're weird, but right. deep down inside, they like it. <laughs> they, they, okay, so they might not want to admit it. Might, hey, t- yeah. might take a couple of years before they figure yeah. it out, but yeah. Yeah, 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 I love it. Okay. So, all right, next one. So you, you know, I'm sure you've had several administrators and probably just like every teacher, some great, maybe mm-hmm. some not great. Right. And, uh, I, I think for me, one of the things that, um, you, you really start to appreciate great leaders when you maybe haven't had them in the past, right? Like yeah. you, you don't necessarily realize how uh, impactful they are. So when you think of like a great administrator, mm-hmm. who's someone you think of and why? Well, I, I, you know, honestly, two come to mind and for, for very different reasons. So when I first started, um, a guy named Ed McManama hired me. Um, and you Ed, to- what was, can you say the name again? Ed, Mc- Ed it- McManama. So it was like almost Ed McMahon from Giants. All, almost. Oh, you know, you, you, you want that, right? But almost, right? So Ed McMahon, yeah. he was the assistant principal at the time, and he eventually became the principal while I was here. Um, and, you know, he really, he tried and he did um, bring about um, a big unity throughout the building. Um, and, you know, what I liked about him is he, he listened to the staff he had, uh, you know, a heartbeat to the staff and, and he was able to, um, carry out those things that you expect an administrator to carry out in, you know, I'm going to use the words in like a non-threatening way. You felt like you could do your thing, but at the same time, you did feel like you had that admin presence in the building, if that makes any sense. Yeah, totally. Um, totally. and then the second person, um, is our current principal, uh, Kelly Harper. Um, she she has um you know since ed has le- left um there was a the dynamic um as there's different admins in the building um kelly has kind of um brought the building back and is continuing to bring the back building back to where um i i think it needs to be you know climate and culture i'm sure in every every profession are a huge thing. Um, and you know, just like a classroom, if you don't have good climate and culture, uh, in the place of work, it's not always going to be pretty. And I think Kelly is doing a very good job in bringing that back. And, um, you know, the presence that she has in the building, I think over time here, as she continues is going to be going to be good. And, you know, she, she actually was, uh, began, um, being a building principal right around COVID time. So she had a lot to work through. Um, But now that we're slowly kind of like coming somewhat back to normal, um, you know, I I think she'll kind of like continue to revamp things and work things the way they need to to be. All right, right, we're gonna give a shout out to Ed and Kelly. I'm actually, before I kind of get into this, but is there kind of like this feeling of like, like, are you back into it or are you like, we're back into it, but something could go wrong? Like, is it kind well, of, yeah, I mean, you, you, you feel like you're walking on eggshells sometimes you, you never know. I mean, we're back, we're back to it in a sense, like everything seems somewhat normal. Right. right. Um, but, but, like, but then, I mean, I'm even thinking, you know, over Thanksgiving break, one of my wife had had COVID, no. um, you know? And so, but when I, when I say back to normal, I, I think that we're in an area an, in that area now where like, yeah, I mean, you can get COVID. It's not as bad. I mean, right. I'm hoping it's not as bad for some people. It might be worse. But I, I think we're back to that point where, like, you can take a breath, but you you, you might not want to take right. a, a big breath, right. you know, for right. various reasons. Um, <laughs> right. right. <laughs> Um, figuratively. Okay. But I, I do think, I do think, I mean, there are some teachers that I talk to uh, that are, I think are still a little on edge with stuff. And, you know, I no. get it. Um, but in the same in the same thing, I think you know, families, kids, and even us as adults, I think we we do yearn and long to get back to that some sense of normalcy, right. whatever that looks like now. You know? Right. 
Yeah, like that is just you know it's it's kind of funny because like I like we were supposed to record this last week and you, you reached out and told me your wife was uh, got COVID and I hope she's doing better. She's great. Yeah, she's great. And so it, there is like there is kind of there's all I know that's gonna sound weird. There's almost a normalcy of getting sick during Thanksgiving break, mm -hmm. right? Like because we kind of like it's the same thing. Like I as a teacher, I got sick over Christmas break like basically every year, mm -hmm. and it's like you almost like save it. Right, like you're like, hey, I can't get sick this week because this I is my break, and I'm gonna be sick. <laughs> right, exactly, right. But you like because you don't want to like miss school too, right? right? Like you're, right. it's it, you know, like there's a lot of times where our body is worn down, but we don't realize it until we slow down. So, yeah, yeah I, I can, I can, I feel that because there is a, you know, there is this kind of like. There's this kind of like I don't want to jinx it. <laughs> There's this that kind mm -hmm. of feeling going on in education right now. So yeah, yeah. Um, shout out to everybody that's you know going through. And I, I don't know. It's like should we expect the worst? Hope for the best? Like what what is that? What is the process we're going? Yeah. Through? So yeah, I know you've done a lot of different things. You, you know, a lot of great experiences in your classroom. I'm really interested in talking more about that. But like when you look at your first year of teaching mm -hmm. and you look at all the stuff that you learned, and there's kind of like there's some continuity in who you shared as a teacher and admin because. Um, how you build culture and climate in your classroom and how you see that mm -hmm. as a teacher, there's a connection there, obviously. But you go back to your first year of teaching, like if you could talk to Brian in that first year, what advice would you give him? Oh, uh, bro. Um, so I, I would say in my first year, like I was literally just worried about surviving and making sure I had content and things to get through the next day. Um, you know, I, I I was blessed to have a lot of great teachers around me at that point, and my um, student teaching experience was fantastic. But like you, you still you run into you you get hired by a, a school and you mm. get their curriculum, and then you're like, oh, you know, where right. do you go from there? So I would say like back then I was you know trying just to live day by day, week by week, and um, at, at that point in my life. Personally, I was focused on content and curriculum and, you know, my, my heart is in, in education for kids. But I think at that point in my life, I was probably more focused on me and trying to make sure I was doing the right thing as a teacher as far as curriculum goes. Right. Now I'm still doing that. I, I still do that. But like I have a greater appreciation for the student as a whole. Like I really want to make sure um, each kid in my classroom when they roll in feels safe. And I want to make sure that um, the content that I am delivering them is worth their time. Mm -hmm. um, plus, on top of that, you know, back to kind of like the whole COVID situation, you, you never know what any kid at any given time is going through. So I'm a big proponent of, of um, just that overall well-being to make sure like you foster those relationships with the kids you work with and even the adults you work with. Right. Um, because if you have those relationships, not only is your classroom going to roll better, kids are going to learn better. You're also going to have a better building, um, in the right. long run, you know? And I think that's actually a really important part of the, um, you know, the, the relationships that you have with your colleagues too. And, um, I know, and I, how, how, Brian, how long have you been teaching? Uh, this is my 19th year. 19th year. So I'm, I'm making an assumption here because you've taught long enough. Yeah, There's, yeah. You've been in probably spaces where it's like awesome to go in the staff room. Mm -hmm. And then spaces is like, I don't want to go in the staff room. Yeah, right. Yeah. Cause like, right, it, right. right. And sometimes like, sometimes you get caught up into it. Like it's like, that's the place to complain and, and it becomes negative and then you go back to your classroom and then it's a little bit harder to get in that mm -hmm. space too. Right. And mm -hmm. I think for me, when we talk about those spaces, the, the, the analogy that I, I've used and I don't, I don't know where I picked it up from is like, really, are you a fountain or a drain? Like when yeah. people are around you as an educator, mm -hmm. um, do they feel like invigorated or do they feel mm -hmm. depleted? Because it's really, it's a really hard thing to go back in a classroom depleted. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right in, yeah. in, in there too. So I appreciate you kind of sharing that and the, the importance of climate and culture kind of at every single level uh, is, is really powerful. So Brian, I am so pumped to, uh, to, uh, to talk to you more and maybe, yeah. you know, for the outro, maybe I'll give you a little chance to wrap over top of it. Could you even wrap? Is that even impossible uh, to wrap to? <laughs> too late it's too i late. got you oh okay. it's too late, man. It's too uh, late. Late. Off the, i'm off the hook it's all good <laughs> everyone have a wonderful day thanks for all you do thank you